Hey traders, checking out on the stock market today. So we had weakness in the morning, a big bounce into the end of the day, and then a drop off, which in the end is giving us tightening ranges as we head into the FOMC tomorrow. We'll see who is positioned well and who is positioned poorly heading into this major fundamental treaty. So we ended up with tightening ranges on our futures charts. It's a big red candle and it's even more red here after hours. And that is because Microsoft had a bearish reaction to earnings. You can see here's where we closed. And over the last hour, the drop pretty much doubled in terms of the size of this pullback. So checking in on Microsoft, you can see bearish reaction. So that is putting some further downward pressure on things. So heading into the morning with where we were opening, we could say the bulls must control the morning from the open if we are going to see trend change follow through on the four hour time frame looking at our futures charts. So as we were heading into the open, that was at right here. And again, it was size of the retracement. So what is the most likely scenario at that point in time, that retracement size was about 40%. So that favors continuation if the bulls control the open. So as soon as we saw that was not the case, then we look for the tightening range. We're still way above the low of yesterday. We're scouting a higher low compared to the low of yesterday, but the odds of the continuation move decrease significantly as soon as the bears control that morning. So looking on the five minute time frame, we can see the first candle, little support level established, high of the day. Okay, the bulls can maybe do it here. As soon as you hit that new low of the day, you say, uh oh, that's a red flag for a tightening range and an inability to break the high of yesterday. Then you break the low of pre-market and that doubles the probabilities decreasing, whatever that means, decreasing the chance to break that high of yesterday. So from there, okay, tightening range, daily inside bar on watch. Four hour time frame. we then had, let's actually go to a different time frame, maybe the two hour. So essentially we're just viewing, let's go to SPY. SPY is nice and clear. So SPY yesterday, we had the low of yesterday, the high of the bounce. We opened the morning, could not break the high of yesterday, pulled back, held the low of yesterday. So there's our hourly higher low. Then we made a move into the end of the day, right to that resistance, and we rejected. The Bears played defense. We were overbought on short-term time frames heading into that resistance. Again, the analogy I gave yesterday, the bulls are running here. They're tired, and they hit that resistance wall, and they can't break through it because they've used all up their energy just to get to that resistance. The five-minute RSI was over 70. The 15-minute RSI was over 70. Where did we top out yesterday on the bounce? The 15-minute RSI hit 70. You know I love backburner oversold bounces. When you're in an extremely bullish market, daily, weekly, hourly uptrend, we play oversold bounces with very high prob probability because they form higher lows on longer-term time frames, and then they see continuation. When you are in a downtrend, it's the opposite. We look for these RSI levels hitting overbought to mark lower highs on longer term time frames, And it's happened twice now on the 15 minute chart. So then we saw weakness into the end of the day with a rejection. And then we saw the after hours weakness in response to Microsoft earnings. So overnight tonight, the key level for the S&P 500 or for SPY, it's gonna be 427.15 because if that level breaks, we just confirm further downtrend and we're looking right back at the low of the drop and for the S&P 500, that level, I've got my space heater kicking on. So that level is down here at 42.85. Again, the FOMC is tomorrow. The FOMC is gonna dictate things, but it is very telling to me that we see zero bounce follow through here. If you show me these daily candles and you say, what is the probability of a daily bounce coming from that candle yesterday? I tell you 92%. Doesn't mean we have to go today. You know, this inside bar could break bull and then the bounce takes place tomorrow. But 92% that we hold that low and start a daily bounce. Granted, we're looking for the lower high, but daily bounce, 92%. If you tell me, well, the FOMC is in two days, I then drop down and say 65% because I can't have that confidence knowing that the FOMC is going to be a coin flip unknown event as far as how the markets react to it. So tightening range makes some sense. Market is just sorting itself out sideways while we wait for this catalyst event. It's either going to be a catalyst for another leg down or a catalyst for the bounce. And again, looking at our RSI levels, we'll have to check in on them tomorrow, 21 hours from now, 20 hours from now. 
But if it were a bearish reaction to the FOMC, the daily RSI is going to be crushed again if we break that low. NASDAQ, same deal, but weaker. And again, looking at the low of yesterday coming into play. And that's because of the Microsoft earnings reaction. We broke support. So we never changed the uptrend. And here we are back hitting lower highs and lower lows. Look at the four hour chart. We had the low high. We had a higher low in here at some point, the low of today, failed resistance, and now a lower low. Let's look at it on the two hour. So found support, failed resistance, and a drop to a lower low. So the NASDAQ is one of our weakest major markets here. And that low is back in play. If we have a bearish reaction to the FOMC, daily RSI will be headed down towards the teens. Weekly RSI will be approaching oversold at that point. Hourly downtrend is our guide, and the high of each day is just an hourly lower high. High of yesterday, 354. High of today, 351. The bear entry at the end of the day, trading is not easy, but sometimes they're just easy setups. And this was one of them. It's a five-minute head and shoulders. We know we're testing key resistance. We know we're just under that resistance, and we know the bulls are extended. And into the end of the day, we know that we are either going to close up at the high or see profit taking and a rejection from resistance. I'm just looking right now at highlighting the end of the day statement of very key next 15 minutes. Five minute uptrends continue or are they lost into hourly lower highs versus the highs of yesterday? That was at 307. That was on this five minute bounce and new that there was a top fishing play there for bears. I was live streaming, but I was saying, if I have any long positions that I'm trying to hold overnight, I am hedging on this five minute bounce with a stop over the high, because if we confirm the five minute downtrend, it's hourly consolidation and a rejection from high of yesterday resistances. So again, longer term time frames dictate probabilities significantly. If we're in a daily hourly uptrend and you show me this pattern, I am way less confident that it's going to roll over than if you tell me we're in a daily downtrend approaching key resistance. Much higher probability of a pullback under that key resistance level. In spite of the exact same thing, SPY was the better play, in my opinion, just because the risk was much less. That high of SPY was right there, whereas the high of QQQ was pretty far away. But SPY rejected by 40 cents. Semiconductors. So semiconductors failing to get any kind of bounce going. Looking at the hourly chart, again, we set the low of the day as the hourly higher low. We then bounced and set an hourly lower high. And then we rolled over and didn't break support until after hours here. Again, we'll have to see, you know, is that a support break? I have to see it happen during regular trading hours, but obviously bears are liking what's going on after hours. And if it breaks, it's an inside bar bear break that has us looking right at that low. How do I play the FOMC? I just use the one minute time frame, and I only make trades when I have a clear level nearby. I just top fish and bottom fish. So if, if the FOMC were going to happen right now, and we drop down on an initial bearish reaction, I bottom fish that low. I make an entry. I put my stop just under it with a little bit of wiggle room. If we see any kind of bounce, I exit a partial position, risk-free. Stop under the low, because of how many times we see reversals, we drop down and V-shape bounce or we see a bull move and then dump. So I would do the same thing in the other direction. Bullish reaction to the FOMC, I'm top fishing a key resistance level. I wanna see the price run straight up or straight down to that level, get extended. That's how I play the FOMC or I don't play it. Either is fine. Tesla stood out as a lead bouncing bull today. They have earnings tomorrow, hourly uptrend confirmed. So the names that confirm the hourly uptrend, essentially the way I view it, is these bulls were running. So a lot of running animals in my analogies. And we break resistance. Great, we're good to go. And bulls look over their shoulder. Tesla bulls look over their shoulder and say, oh man, SPY's not joining me. QQQ's not joining me. IWM's not joining me. None of the major sectors are joining me. I'm losing confidence. You can't have confidence in an individual name if the markets aren't following. You can say Tesla is positioned well and positioned better than others to benefit if our major sector see daily inside bar bull breaks. But we can also say this bull break on Tesla is going nowhere if the broader markets don't get any daily bounce going. Bigger picture though, it's gonna be earnings that dictate everything. 
as to whether we drop down to lower lows or whether we head back up towards a thousand. Healthcare tried to get the bounce going high of yesterday. We broke it by five pennies. That's a double top. So right at the end of the day, double top and roll over into hourly consolidation. Still in equilibrium because we're not dropping as badly after hours, although we are dropping. Everything is dropping after hours. So double top, bulls must hold 126.27 to remain in the equilibrium to try and stay in that tightening range. XLF was a bounce leader. Hourly trend change, very clear. End of the day consolidation, just looking for an hourly higher low. So out of all of our major sectors, XLF, definitely the lead bull. That being said, we are just scouting a daily lower high to be the result of this bounce, and the financial sector is certainly going to significantly react to the FOMC tomorrow at 2 p.m. Hourly uptrend is our guide. When we lose the hourly uptrend, probabilities significantly increase that the daily lower high is set. And then from there, can the bulls confirm the daily trend change to prove follow through on the bounce, or is it just another lower high to continue a downtrend? IWM, daily inside bar, couldn't break resistance. IWM was helped by XLF strength. Growth names didn't necessarily stand out as very strong, but the financial sector certainly did. IWM has to hold 194.56 to form an hourly higher low to try and remain in an equilibrium. If that level breaks, we're looking back at the dump low with the bears back real confident. If you don't break the pattern of a lower high every day, eight days in a row now, waterfall drop, stair-step pattern. If you don't break that pattern, bears have nothing to worry about. And right now, SPY and QQQ and IWM are all in that pattern. Stair-step, waterfall drop, eight days in a row. XBI. So XBI broke resistance. It's one of the stronger names, but again, it's not going anywhere if IWM doesn't. So daily bounce is underway, and it could be a daily bear flag. Daily RSI has cooled off. I was interested in this bounce significantly because of how beat up the daily RSI was. It is now significantly cooling off, which means my reason for being in the trade is diminishing. So I did swing a larger than normal position overnight last night, and I woke up this morning and said, why did I do that? But I wasn't too beat up on myself because that was part of the game plan. And yesterday, end of the day, 14 and a half day maker, we'll call it a three week maker, round up a little bit, five days in a week. So three week maker, and at the weakness pre-market, it was down a week maker. So I gave back a third of the gains when it was its weakest. So I didn't like that. But again, I knew that's the risk the reward. You know, if I'm going, again, bigger, bigger trade, going for higher risk, higher reward kind of trade. And if the bounce didn't follow through overnight, which it didn't, that's what happens. So what did I do? So I look at the morning. I say, all right, I'll give the bulls a chance first thing. Can we break 92.60 and confirm the hourly trend change and see daily bounce follow through? So we started, I was watching the short-term time frames. Two minute looked pretty good. All right, we're making our way up there. We're 1% away. And then we dropped and gave it all back. I scaled out some positions. So I scaled out. I forget where my initial, I think I gave the bulls a chance to get up to the high of the day. And then once we started seeing weakness, I exited a third. So let's say my first exit up a third was maybe this one minute lower high here, recognizing we were starting to see a loss of momentum with still being well under the high of the previous day. And then I exited another third when the low of the day broke. So now I'm down to a third of my swing position and I'm giving back some profit. Definitely gave back a chunk of profit, but I'm now down to a much more manageable size. And I know that I am still looking, even with the resistance rejection first thing, I am still looking for an hourly higher low, anything above 85.31, and I'm very confident that the bulls are going to form that hourly higher low today compared to 85.31, and there'll be a bounce. I don't know how big the bounce will be, but it'll be big enough that I can make some of the losses that I just locked in, not losses, but given back profit, and I can make some of that back. So I then just traded XBI and LABU again all day. Again, this, this year, as long as this keeps up, I am only trading this sector and a couple other names here and there, but 90% of my trading is the biotech sector unless something changes. So I was just watching this tightening range. It was a 15 minute downtrend, but then just notice the base of support. 88.91 low of the day. And it stood out because we would hold that low and QQQ would drop to a lower low. And we could say, okay, we're holding up better than some of our other sectors. We then dropped down 
and held it. We broke it by a penny, but double bottom by a penny, double bottom by another penny, and then another double bottom, quadruple bottom, whatever, by 14 pennies. So I was just bottom fishing like a madman. It was a day for fishing. I did it three times and went three for three. So my style, let's say I've got one position still open. Let's just break it down into three positions. I sold two. I've got one still open. I would buy the same amount. So now I've got two positions. And just looking at how this bottom fishing played out. So the lows here, let's go to LABU. And the lows are at 1710, 1707, 1709. And so I'm just playing right off those levels. I don't think I played this one, but I played one, two, three. I played those three. And it was just automatic. If we get down to the low of the day, I'm going to play off that level. And so what I would do is I got one position that's swing trade mindset. So I would enter, here's one, 1713. So again, right above the low. That was probably this attempt. So entered 1713. Again, we're not putting our stop one penny under support. We're giving wiggle room. Maybe my stop is at 1699, you know, risking 20 cents, but reward 70 cents. And then this bounce, the reward was 80 some cents. And then this end of the day, a tightening range bull break, the reward was multiple dollars. So I'm in the way I played it. I've got my one position. I enter another position, same size, 1713. I sell a quarter at 1733. I sell a quarter at 1747. So my average sell there is 1740 of half that position, which is a gain of 27 cents, which means my break even is now 1687 or something like that. Can't lose on that trade. As soon as I sell half, stop under the low. All right, now I've just doubled my position size back. I've got one of those back. And then I did it again. 1721. So again, right near the low, it's not, I'm not nailing the low, but the low down here, maybe we bounced a little bit right off of it, but either way, it was right around that level. Risk is 20 some cents, sold half, 20 cents higher. My break even is now 1701. Set my stop, let it ride, and then I did it again, 1716 to 1747. So there's, I doubt I nailed that bottom. Don't know which one it was, but one of these, 1716 to 1747, sell half, break even is under $17, set a stop and let it play out. So that is how I built back a sizable position again after selling all morning because the bull didn't prove anything to me. It's just bottom fishing. And you look at it and say, well, what's 20 cents? What's 30 cents? I mean, that's one to 2%. That's very meaningful, especially when you stack them up like that. And so at that point, I just let it play out. We got the bull break. And then I ended up scaling out some of that position because I knew I don't want to swing the same position size that I did last night. I want a smaller swing size position. So I did sell a bit into this bull move. And another thing that I was doing was hedging. You know, we struggle at 1879. I'm, I'm trading off XBI's chart the entire time, but we're struggling at 9.9165. So what I would do is I would enter LABD. I would still be in LABU, but I would enter LABD, take a little bit of profit, on a, a pullback on the five minute time frame, and then I'd stop out with a small loss. That's insurance, where if we top out, I'm still holding my LABU, but my account's not gonna drop much because my LABD position is gonna be making money. So I did give back some profits on the way up by trying to top fish, and then I missed the end of the day. Whenever I live stream, I'm not good at trading the end of the day. But in the end, from being down a week maker, from where I closed yesterday, I got it back and ended up down about a day maker, which is no biggie, I'll make that tomorrow. So very pleased with the recovery. And that was that, bottom fishing. Just such low risk. Why not give it a shot? You stop out, then you don't. If you don't stop out, keep doing it as long as it keeps working. MNMD. So this sector, I've talked about it before. This is the psychedelic sector. This is as high risk, high reward as you can get in the markets because this sector is so in its infancy, underdeveloped and legal hurdles, all kinds of hurdles. But this sector is worth watching. Again, I'll just say it again because I plan on making 
I'm very confident I'm going to make some good money in this sector. There's a number of things that we need. We need a catalyst. That catalyst is going to be a law change, whether Canada legalizes whatever they do or whether we see there's multiple catalysts. One of them is a legal change. One of them would be medical trial results that blow everybody's minds and, and move the process along. And another would be a major buyout from a major pharmaceutical company. These are all things that would spark the sector. Another key ingredient to FOMO, euphoria, all-time high bull runs is a sexy story. You need a sexy story. If this is copper or if this is, you know, whoever, it's not a sexy story. If it's psychedelic sector, think of the age of who is coming into the market. Think of through COVID, think of the Reddit group, think of Wall Street bets, think of Twitter. It's my generation. And if you tell us that there's cutting edge science and significant headway being made in the therapeutic treatment of psychedelics, we're all over that. That's a sexy story. I'm not going to buy and hold because that's not my style, but I will... You, that, that will be an aspect of the media attention that brings in the capital that leads to a massive bull run. So there's these little ingredients and you're making a big stew and they all get a little added at a time. Sometimes they all get added at multiple times. You get the legal change. You get the media all over it. You get the Wall Street bets and Twitter all over it. You have thinly traded names. You don't have many options. It's a funnel effect. There's only three higher listed companies that you can trade right now. Maybe... At, in the future. Again, this is what I did with the MJ sector. When I started trading MJ, there were literally eight companies that you could choose from. Right now, you've got 50 to 60 to 80 companies that you can choose from. It's a funnel effect. If you Google marijuana stocks and you can only pick eight names, all the money is going into those eight names. So if you have an extremely undeveloped sector, that's what's happening right now in terms of there are, you know, now there's three or four names and in the future, there'll be 40 or 50. So we're watching this sector very closely. It is crushed. It is beat up. And that's because it's the highest risk, highest reward sector. And right now, everybody's tightening up with their money in this fear market environment. But we had MNMD come out with news saying, hey, the FDA just approved our clinical trial where one of our drugs is going to be tested for general anxiety disorder, which impacts 3% of the country, which is 6 or 7 million people. And the majority of those people, or maybe 40% or something of those people, don't treat it. So we know anxiety in today's day and age with everything that's going on and all this stimulation is an ever-increasing thing. And granted, it's only one dose. This isn't a moneymaker. This isn't the kind of drug that you hook people on, you scumbag opiates. This is the kind of drug that you give them once. And that's what this trial is going to be, one dose, and then see how it plays out. So... Again, I'm not going to be in it for long-term fundamentals of these companies, but I'm going to be in it for short-term, massive breakout hype. Not now, sometime in the next five to 10 years. So again, this is just a mental preparation. I can visualize it. I'm foreseeing that I am going to have a year maker in a short amount of time in this sector at some point in time. And I'm ready for it. So this is a 50% move off the low. But again, it got absolutely smashed on the way down. 65% to the high of the day today. Obviously, massive volume. But from here, we need a daily trend change. So we need, wherever we top out, a higher low and higher high. And we're not coming off of all-time lows with this name. But obviously, it's been crushed. What I did see is I did attempt a trade here. And this was a, a tough one. I stopped out by the penny. That's me right there. So I was looking at a bull flag. On the 15 minute time frame, I was playing for a 15 minute bull flag and I made an entry at 109 and I put my stop at 105 to give wiggle room because I was playing off 107 support. And that's the tricky thing with penny stocks. Every one penny is such an important level, but it failed a 15 minute bull flag and ended up being an hourly bull flag. It stopped me out right there and then it ran a very significant amount, 25%. So that would have been a very nice win. But what did I do? Did I mope? Did I kick the computer? Did I swear and woe is me? Oh my God, the market makers just go for my stops every time. No, I said, wow, that's convincing volume. That's a convincing bull flag. I'm going to the rest of the sector and I'm going to play a laggard. So I entered CMPS at 1540. And I said, 
If CMPS breaks the high of yesterday, 1558, that's an hourly trend change confirmed and the daily bounce gets going. So I'm in at 1540 and we end up going 5%. So I missed a trade, went to the other name, had a chance at 5%. I didn't sell. I am going to swing it and give it a chance for some bounce follow through. And again, look at how weak this is. By no means should you buy and hold this sector, in my opinion, because there's way too many uncertainties. But when the momentum comes and when the hoard comes and when the volume and volatility comes, that's when the opportunity is there. So I'll probably sell partial and put my stop maybe under the low. We'll see. Not a huge position, but just want to be constantly keeping an eye on this sector because it will have its day in the sunshine, I promise. Gold. So gold daily, bull flag confirmed, higher low and higher high. I did draw. Whenever you're in a trade, look with, put on the glasses of the opposing side and say, all right, I'm bullish gold. But we're in a weekly and daily uptrend. The two month time frame has been constricting very nicely. We're holding EMA 12 here. We're looking back up towards that all time high. Maybe it's a four month bull flag. We're getting real tight. So that's all fine. Put on your bare glasses and say, what would be a red flag for me with my bullish bias? What would be something that I need to be cautious of? So this morning, I kept an eye on this uptrending resistance line as we approached it. We then rejected from it pretty hard and said, okay, that means that I am paying attention to this uptrending resistance line. And then we recovered very nicely and we rejected again. So this is a very valid resistance line for me as long as it's intact. And that's not the exact one, but it was something very similar. And there is an uptrend line. Is this a potential rising wedge? I don't love the uptrending line of support, but that's how I would have it. Just something to be keeping an eye on. If it's a red reaction to the FOMC, it's worth keeping an eye on this rising wedge. Because again, one possibility here for the metals that the bulls do not want to see is a failure to break. Let's go to the two week time frame. A failure to break the recent highs and just a continued tightening range. So 1877 is key and silver's got it as well. Anything under 2540 is just a lower high for a continued tightening range. So bulls really want to maintain daily uptrends from here. And the FOMC is going to be a huge impact in that. Talking too much, do good things. Hope you had a good day. So picking up story time, still in Costa Rica and getting ready to move to the little house on the beach to do the house sitting. Still staying at the hostel at this point and exploring the jungle. Lots of hiking trails around and rivers to swim in and fun to be had. Some stray animals. So befriended some dogs and cats that were living out on the road. And they would sleep on our doorstep knowing that we were the good guys. This is a cool river spot that, again, everything's just a 5-10 minute walk from the center of town. Ended up getting an ear infection from that water. As my body was not used to the different microbes and things in that kind of environment. But learned some tricks. Obviously, there's, I mean, there's no ATM in town. There's no doctor in town. So I ended up just getting some garlic cloves and some olive oil and you crush up the garlic cloves and put it in the olive oil overnight and then you use that as eardrops and you can even just crush up the outside of the garlic clove and stick it in your ear overnight and so after an elevated temperature and a clear ear infection for about three days it went away and didn't have to worry about it so nice that some natural remedies could help things out in that instance and didn't have to go to panama which is the border where there's the closest real town, but that's a hour and a half, two hour drive to get to. So you know I like ants at this point, but they, these ants are just insane. They would have these trails going along the dirt that would be so walked on by these paths of ant as they're building their nests and taking these leaves that it would literally be, you know, four or six inches lower than the ground around it in these little channels, just where these ants erode the dirt. And then, of course, rain falls on it, and then rain adds to that erosion. But there are literal lanes where the ants are just 24-7 the whole day, just back and forth, thousands of them in their commutes. 
So the best part about the ocean at n in the evening is the water and the air is still plenty warm to be swimming. So pretty much until you can't see anymore, the ocean is fair game. And it's pretty much a multiple day excursion to get into the ocean. Some cool bugs. And again, that was the plants and animals were one of the coolest thing because I had never been in an environment that had all these different species and to just observe them all. It was like a, a playground of life. So that's cowboy. Cowboy was a little old dude and his God was ball. Anything with a ball, that's all he cared about in his life. He was probably double digits age at this point, and he has since passed on, but he was still killing it in terms of running for that ball. As many times as you would throw it, he would go get it. So our job consisted of every morning walking 100 feet to the wide open beach that was to ourselves and throwing the ball for the dogs and playing with the dogs and swimming, and that was it. And this is Baloo. Baloo spoke Spanish and Cowboy spoke English. Baloo was much younger. So if you wanted her to come, you'd say, Benga! And Cowboy would give her a run for her money in terms of going after that ball. But they were a great duo to hang out with, so we spent the next four weeks hanging out with them. And I'll tell some stories, some dog stories, where we fought off wild packs of wolves from the mountaintop. I actually already told that story, so some of you OG TCG viewers know that story, but it's a good one. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good day.